Ladies and gentlemen, since March and to this day, he's worked tirelessly to ensure that both summits, the business summit and this year's future summit, run as smoothly and as possible and a complete success. And this man, ladies and gentlemen, he is an entrepreneur, a change activist, and also the founder and CEO of Pakistan's leading conference management organization, the Nutshell Conferences, and also the founder of Corporate Pakistan Group, and he's also a member of the Executive Council of Marketing Association of Pakistan, and he's also such a very good friend of mine, as well as my mentor. Ladies and gentlemen, please give the biggest round of applause for Mr. Muhammad Asfar Asan. Thank you, Amelia. Thanks for your flattering introduction. I think I deserve it. <laughs> Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Honorable Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee, General Zubair Mahmud Hayat, distinguished speakers, delegates, partners, members from the press and media, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good afternoon. It's my great pleasure and privilege to welcome so many distinguished thought leaders to the Future Summit. I'm also very grateful to our sponsors, partners, and supporters for making this possible. My dear friends, over the next two days, we shall discuss and debate the future of mankind on an increasingly vulnerable planet, Earth. Our very survival as a species appears at a stake given the realities of global warming and climate change. As Mother Nature flexes her muscles and puts mankind on notice for living well beyond its sustainable means, Pakistan finds itself once again as a frontline state in the war against a different kind of terrorism one in which nature is the prime antagonist. We in Pakistan are at the receiving end of the world's erratic weather dynamics that are yielding droughts that impact our food security, rising sea levels that turn our arable land into wasteland, wasteland, as well as unprecedented downpours causing floods that are amplified by glaciers melting at a very alarming rate. We have decimated our forest and drastically reduced the Earth's ability to absorb and retain water, making landslides and torrential flooding a clear and present danger in the world's mountainous areas. My dear friends, the only way to fix humanity's wagon is for humanity to close ranks and speak with one voice, a rational and logical voice that stresses the making of peace with nature by throttling back on our pension for conspicuous consumption and focusing instead on doing more, much more, with less, a lot less, by celebrating the quality of life instead of relentlessly focusing on the sheer quantity of it. Even as we hope and wish and pray for better sense to prevail, a review of the reality on the ground fills one with foreboding and a fair bit of despair. It is fortunate that our faith has outlet despair and condemned it as haram. And Allah has mandated that beyond our trials and tribulations, there is hope of a better future. Ladies and gentlemen, in every dark and threatening storm cloud, there is a hidden, a bright and shining silver lining. The key is to not be overwrought by the ferocity of the storm, but instead to find that silver lining through a strong sense of belief in our omnipresent and omnipotent savior and a perpetual attitude of gratitude for the many blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us and which we tend to forget 
in our last lust for hope. Democracy is the cradle of freedom, it is said. But the ground realities show these freedoms being increasingly curtailed by an intolerance of the worst kind that dehumanizes and debases our standing as Ashraf al Makhlukat, Allah's chosen and most favorite creation. I need not add to the gloom by going through the details of what is transpiring in our midst, for we are all well familiar with the sheer stupidity that we see being broadcasted into our living rooms 24-7 by a mass media in a mess and badly in need of sensitization to the norms of civilized behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, we have become a republic of the offended, just waiting for someone to offend us so we can make a horrendous song and dance of it. When there is silence or inaction, bigotry gets emboldened, reason debates, descends into destructive firestorms that threaten to engulf the parliament and the Supreme Court. The state reels and rolls with the punches as bureaucrats and law enforcement officers are assaulted by politicians. And the bureaucracy seems to exist to serve only itself and not the people. When all this happens, you know that not just democracy, but the very civil society it professes to nurture is in peril. We have become a more divided society. Minorities feel threatened, and Pakistan's credentials are being undermined even further. The state of Pakistan has been severely tested with the recent Asia BB case. My dear friends, inequality in society has grown with leaps and bounds. And despite rising prosperity, the great divide just keeps getting more pronounced. While countries have become more prosperous with economic growth, spurred by globalization and innovation, the rich have got richer and the poor poorer. Inequalities have grown across the world and the subcontinent is where inequality is the highest. It is often said that one cannot manage, that one cannot measure. And when it comes to mapping the social landscape we in Pakistan exist in a fairly dense gray area. Across the border, they have done a better job. And the statistics shows that the top 1% own 58% of the wealth and more importantly, that the one person also captures 70 persons of the new wealth created. On this side of the border, one assumes that things are not quite different. There is widespread farmer distress and pervasive joblessness in a predominantly young population. The challenge, of course, is to have equity with growth while not punishing the wealth creators. Yet the oft-repeated question asked in Pakistan, as indeed across the border, is whether we are heading for a demographic disaster or are we going to reap a demographic dividend? Ladies and gentlemen, there is much discussion around the world about the changes and challenges the technology has brought into our lives. The benefits we have embraced without a second thought and become more integrated with global society and grown more powerful as a result. Technology has set free the truth even if it tastes bitter at times. Privacy is a thing of the past, but why should we have anything to hide in the first place? The fearlessness and openness of honest people is reshaping society across the globe, and most visibly so here in Pakistan. Social media, like any tool created by men, can be used both for evil and for good. It gives everyone the freedom to express an opinion, as well as to trash those that disagree. But it also allows for greater social activism and gives voice to the erstwhile faceless 
and nameless and has proved to be a greater, great enabler of change. Unfortunately, while we live in a time where the world's knowledge is at our fingertips and the truth is easily verifiable, the truth is constantly on trial. Fake news is a virus that has invaded a digital ecosystem and there is no cure in sight. Ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the key issues that dominates the 21st century and which we shall debate, discuss, argue and learn about at the future summit also. It is said that learning till your last breath constitutes a life well lived. The rich food for thought that comprises the feast we have laid out for you over the next two days, I hope will serve, help us leave here better informed and hence better prepared for any bounces that life may ball us. Thank you, my dear friends, and many congratulations for the excellent job our cricketers have done in the T20 format. Pakistan, Zindabad, Pakistan, Pindabad.